the country about seven have been dancers. And these uh, pictures on the left, Excellency, lady and gentlemen, probably is here that as the confrontier of what I want to present, UNESCO UIL based in Hamburg, uh, born in Germany, they uh, initiated this um, to reform of the adult education in the whole world better. I will present to inform to you that about the international conference on conference on seven in Marrakesh and Morocco in 2022 of March. Seven uh, international conference of adult education in Marrakesh and Morocco. They conducted from 15 to 16, 17. Uh, they meet together to talk about agenda to change education adult education to develop with sustainable development or how to change the agenda how to change the trend afterwards we will see all of us the sanitary country about 40 of them were educates uh, the informal education of uh, adult education as the member the senator country to implement the framework Marike framework of actions f mfafa and 2030 the pictures that that you are seeing now, uh, it's the evidence that Medicare Framework of Action Conference 7 conducted on 15 to 17 of June 2022. Uh, and in this, we can see Excellency Secretary of State, Ministry of Edu Education, Youth and Sport, he is the representative of Cambodian as well. I will pre and I present to you, to Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, to be aware that can we link those adult education to agenda uh, sustainable SDG 2030, how we can do it? All of us on the emerging in the future of, for all of us, that the speakers, the next speaker have been uh, said about digital, the imagination, uh, our humans, if we, we are not um, uh, moderns, uh, we cannot catch up with the globalized um, organization, the globalization on the uh, we are country as uh, the and, uh, four, industry of 4.0. This conference here have been discussed about the role of L, L in adult learning education. Uh, adult learning education, slide short, I, I use the word L, adult learning education. Uh, with the connect to the uh, digital globalization of this um, the uh, conference and their focus on these issues, roles of education else uh, with the growth of the uh, geomet and also climate change. And we see that the whole world uh, of change, we are concerning worry that our humans, the adults, the leaders, the each country, members of each country live with, uh, will not catch up with the globalization, which mean uh, talk about the world change could be uh, changed faster. And the final point, the conference here have received the, and the includes the inclusive, have the inclusive, uh, because we not care about inclusive. At that time, most of the people will be uh, we cannot catch up with the globalization of digital uh, rapids uh, digital globalization excellency lady and gentlemen see the picture is the Malga framework of action of Maragas that they have done that action was adapted what is the Maragas framework of action what they have been adapted on the 17th of June, 2022, the members of 150 country, what they have been adapted. Those points I've been presented, I'd like to uh, raise what is linked with other learning education on education, other learning education. Those conference have that conducted a lot of works. At this opportunity, I just want to talk about else, uh, adult education learning, 
I'd like to inform about the important point of Madagascar's framework of action, implement the action uh, adult learning in 2030. Uh, adult learning education is the composition of the lifelong learning. Second, education else with the adult learning education, it's a human rights. Third, adults uh, education is the basic of the sustainable development force. Education activity for uh, climate change. Uh, whether uh, fifth, promote equal rights of all uh, learning in the digital environments. Next, the preparation of adults for the uh, future work to run out this uh, situation. Finally, talk about increase of the public foundation and allocated resources for uh, adult live, live learning to uh, divide it, the existing budget, not only in Cambodia, but also the whole world country talk about in informal educations that the budget was less compared to the national budget. In Cambodian budget, in formal education, only 0.8% compared to the whole education. And it's not strange, not only Cambodia, all country in the world have you see appeal those role, important role of education, like adult like education, uh, uh, of the informal education, lifelong learning. Now, all of us in this room, no one's uh, it's not the adult anymore. It's not from the 14 until we there. We all adults. Now we make ourselves as uh, adults a waste of time and opportunity that did not put more budget to develop themselves, to develop the country, to develop the whole world. That's why we still have climate change. Those uh, issues have uh, been abundant to ourselves. I'd like to give some example about implemented of the adults in Ukraine. Actually, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, have been aware that wars, uh, hard wars uh, exist, happen in Ukraine. DVD International also have country office in Ukraine as well. Um, I like, just want to inform Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, the leader in ministry could be the uh, force, uh, driving force uh, to promote on those uh, budget to education or adult learning could be the evidence could be implemented to educate of the adults education. Even those uh, Ukraine, even those war almost two years, but uh, life, uh, adult learning is there, the re healing, reconciliate on the, the healings of the people of Ukraine living in the, the reach of the happy country. Actually, I've studied in Ukraine, I will study in USA. They are developed country, I'm so happy. Now they're not developed country and not, they're not living in, in peace. They're not living in peace and health. And they're learning education, the role, what is the role to healings? Today, we are talking about digital. Digital can go to the uh, chaos of the uh, banker, and uh, the banker of the education could be the theme healing to the banker or uh, to ukraine they're still hiding themselves inside the banker uh, from the uh, bombardment or from the shelling could be excellency like the excellency kamsitani is informed as platform what we are doing in cambodia it's the same in ukraine also dvd international cooperate with partner with our partner to create the platform we are doing from distant we doing from distant from germany from border of poland we send those story like how to live uh, to make uh, them so happy with the situation with the critical situation the people living in civil life to develop so eat the hamburger and cheese now they don't have clean water they don't have electricity in the trend of their living uh, so cold during the winter during the snows how to live how do they live they have not and strong from inside people will die before their missiles this is the evidence to like to inform excellency lady and gentlemen 
is the uh, power uh, who have the energy to make to make our budget to increase for all of us it is an example in the and the um, trauma area of difficulties i like to inform in jordan but jordan is in front of in front of palestine country you probably read uh, news about hamas who attack palestine uh will attack those uh Zogdang in front uh, in, in the river, Zogdang in front of the Palestine across the river. Those who can swim, no need to ride a boat from Palestine or ride uh, Sudan, uh, Sudan, from Palestine and ride from uh, Palestine to Zodani. Uh, Zodani, uh, how they they are living in pressure and uh, trauma, only ails, only ails. Uh, else also support those Zogdani in the country, they can have their uh, uh, welcome so migration, the welcome of those migrations who uh, flee for uh, asylum seekers. DVD International, we have, have been done a lot of work on these issues. How do we do it? Actually, digital, digital platform, it is a platform very important in other activity that we are doing. And normally, we might immigrate. Uh, I don't know, Excellency, lady and gentlemen, used to have the, during we have the uh, refugees camp in side two, side B, refugees camp in the old day about 30 years ago. I see that the, uh, my, the refugees who fled the country to their uh, peaceful country, they're still living in um, not so, uh, they're still afraid, they fear, fear that they will discriminate, they fear about wars, those people who cannot escape like the same time. Even those they live in peace, but they not really come inside their minds. Learning education can wreck you through uh, counseling. Do some time, I like to go move a bit fast. I'd like to invite uh, Excellency, lady and gentlemen, please look at and what's uh, uh, in Cambodia, what I have done for the life of uh, education, adult education learning, uh, Ministry of Youth, Education, Youth and Sport, Excellency uh, from uh, relevant ministry have, have done, probably don't know what is the um, education, adult education will link to the lifelong learnings like Excellency, lady and gentlemen have been aware. All of us, uh, we carry out those uh, of the University of Life. We learn by ourselves when we are, after we have birth until we are 10 to 20 a year, 50, 30 years, 60 years. Those who are older, uh, they have those uh, University of Life more broad more experience. I'd like to inform that what we are doing in Cambodia, actually we had stakeholders who are working on these issues, but in this framework and the DBB International, I'd like to allow Sanli to uh, present what is the DBB International have been done. DBB International were partnered with Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport in 2017. We are learned together in 2021-23. We were thinking why we not use existing community learning center existing. Uh, the community existing, the youth uh, center youth that the government doing to change of those locations to be the center of lifelong learning because we have policy of lifelong learns with adapts in 2019 and also we combine those books for the study uh, with the center of lifelong learns. Why we're not doing it? Why we're not doing it? For this point, that's why DVD International has been discussed with the Department of the Center Education and Formal Education with the leader of Excellency Dr. D. Samsinet. Uh, we think that um, we should mobilize the existing 
to be uh, what we want to have. We don't need to use more budgets to construct the building for million. That's why DVD don't have that. That's why we don't do it. DVD is the agency education of adults and learning in the world. We know strategy, we have tools that we uh, want to use here. Curriculum Globals, uh, Curriculum Global is six model. No six model from zero to six. It's the uh, possibility that can be a community institute that study so they can reach the lead themselves with more sustainable, finally. Uh, the role of the adults learning in community very crucial. First, can allocate the community to participate. Second, to make the community more accountability. And finally, they have ownership. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you see the pictures. It's the um, fundraising ceremony to support the center of uh, lifelong learning in Baha Premier province. It's the location remote area. Um, we can working there and also we say our heart also we invite the venerable man and pray here. He will do the fundraising to support the center. This is not the first time. This cooperation, culture of sharing as the reach of Cambodian culture from our ancestor. And before we married our children, we no need to set and we eat uh, instant noodles because we have, we have so many wedding invitation letter. We're sharing, we're happy to go there. Why we not dig up those rich culture all together from our ancestor? 10 center that we have done, five is a center for lifelong learn community. There's we have first in Sri Kanong in Kampot province, second Prairoka in Kanda province, third Chotong in Posat, fourth Krang Liu in Kampong Chenang, five in Palhal and Previhia province. We have the youth center education in Kampung Thom, Kampung Chenang, Kampung Cham, Takao, and Swairian province. Those 10 center, they can stand, they can, uh, for Excellency Lady and Gentlemen, to stand, uh, to ask them, they can ask them the experience, uh, free, uh, with confidence. I'd like to uh, uh, inform that the happiness uh, we have done those, those 10 locations with the remote uh, area almost starting from zero. Now they are ownership. They can run by themselves. They can uh, find an English teacher, a computer teachers without concern that there's no money to pay because they can save themselves uh, with the short term. I'll, this is all I have. I do believe that if Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, want to know more what is our cooperation with the Ministry of Education, Good and Sport, how we do it for three years. Now we have the community ownership. Welcome to uh, to your questions or uh, can you, uh, write to, to me directly. Thank you so much for your pay attention to my presentation, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. So welcome to all questions. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to Excellency uh, for her, uh, actually, director for presentation. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. Next, I would like to invite Ms. Conley Kanaji, the director of Ministry of Youth and uh, Vocational Trainings, um, uh, to the uh, technology of the uh, skill and vocational trainings. First of all, my respected Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, who so present in this uh, national uh, workshop today. I'm Kunle Kanaya, represent the Ministry of Vocational Training. Uh, uh, I'd like to present our lifelong learning as a national policy, but it's steady from 2019. We had the stakeholders to achieve this national 
policy. We have some ministry of vocational trainings. Um, for this, the policy can achieve the policy. We uh, provide training to all level from short uh, course, a long course of one week uh, to master or PhD. As the youth for the, the question for youth can uh, learn, and when they drop school, they want to uh, learn, we still have uh, opportunity for them. If they, if they drop school, we not, doesn't mean if they drop school, you cannot learn, but we have a platform with C, B, C to C, C1 to C10, um, uh, C2 as 11, C3 about 12 grades. Those youths who cannot carry you to those C, they can grab those vocational training, lifelong learning first. We can learn those uh, technology third with the short training course for this mandate we are preparing for the work uh, laborers for the labor they don't have any skill if they uh, migrated and then they don't have skill what they do what they should do if they give up uh, the job this we have the mission related to lifelong learning the same at the uh, um, one point million, one million point five. It's a policy, a government policy. I will present to you with this program. What is the part for uh, to support lifelong learning of these uh, people and uh, attack it? Who I will attack it? What is the condition can work together? I can just go to a slide directly for now. Please uh, present the slide. We we'll talk about those uh, a program of 1.5 million uh, of the government policy. General's uh, aspect of this program, campaign of dissemination and registration, progress of program and training. How we do it? General's uh, theme of those. Uh, talk about relevant ministry, implemented this uh, policy. We need to have a lot of partners, a lot of support, objective of the programs. Um, um, started from this 1 point million, uh, started from 2023, uh, around February or March, the initiative by some like the Joe, he want to have those, uh, the free education, provide the uh, uh, vocational training of free education uh, afterward is uh, during the new government led by some like Bobon Tobaday Hun Manet. He set up the policy of the governments. This uh, policy to implement it. We have the priority policy, six of them in the program that's 1.5 million be implemented. And 2023, on the 14th of November, we did the launching programs of this uh, program, which participated by some like and other stakeholder who participated. At the same time, we have the official document sub degree of studies with assigned by some like and also the sub degree. Uh, starting from the objective and the condition with the cooperation from the ministry, support ministry, uh, the National Council of Society, Ministry of Economics and Finance, a ministry they are working with uh, 1.5 million with uh, each uh, entity was involved, Ministry of Edu Ed Economic and Finance, Ministry of Workers and Training, Secretary to support the um, social uh, affairs support and also the support from the nationals uh, social degree fund ministry of youth ministry of um, culture ministry of planning ministry and the sub national uh, administration why we need to have support from each of them and now at the operational entity was ministry of vocational training and ministry of culture ministry of uh, vocational trainings we started from this year until now, about two and a half um, months, 
it's about uh, two million uh, stu uh, about twenty thousand students we we talk about ministry of planning those who study we need to have the id4 and also the um social security uh, cards we are working closely with the um nationals uh social support society uh in the school they need to uh support about per month about twenty eight thousand a real to for the students who now we support them as monthly other ministry involved with the support from national uh, administration uh, under the national administrations um, for those uh, the project uh, program we provide the uh, program for the lifelong learn for the people, especially the youth from poor families, uh, the uh, vulnerable uh, people, also the uh, person who informal and formal economy uh, receive a new opportunity jobs. We see updated like after COVID, some of the work has been lost. Example, in my place, I work with the uh the all those training of those uh, workers uh, we institute they want to provide those training to the workers we provide uh terminically provide training before they they those uh print certificate we do the print through the system so in clubs they from eight to two they reduce staff they can work on this other places they probably um dismiss some of the staff or the staff will lose the job but here we don't do that so reskill upskill they can do it you focus on the poor families because some of them for years government provide uh, those uh, the Adipo about 70,000 uh, families uh, with some support money. We had spent a lot of those, like we give them fish. We need to train them so they can have skill. At the same time, governments also to attract an investor so we can ensure that they can provide job for the people so we can develop like the government set out the policy in 2030. So we ask for 10 minutes. I can move a little faster and talk about this 10 minutes. For the objective I've been presenting to you, second, the targets who have the capacity who can be able to start to learn. First, the youth from the poor families. We had the equity funds card. Uh, I have first ID poor, second ID poor, the vulnerable families who have the ID cards. The first uh, target, they learn, they can uh, find a uh, monthly support. Per month, they can receive about 28,000 reals if they learn of uh, 80% required to come and, and learn so they can get more. Actually, um, they learn for four months. We have program to learn about eight months to 10 months. I'm talking about 28,000 years only for four months. If they learn about eight months to 10 months, they can get more support than that. In general, those people will learn, they receive about 1 million, uh, 28,000 plus four months for 10 months or eight months or 10 months. It's the same sort of average. They receive second target group second group they can learn for those youths a disability youths we support them so uh, they not feel uh, uh, depressions they could be more burden to society second disability and youths and deaf people in Badambong their disability the deaf and the mute they can uh, learn uh, some of them they I had this about leg, and they lost the leg, but they can learn IT, they can sit around and use the computer. We have this policy to support disability youths and the youths of the um, NSS cards, and also the youth introduced by the 
city and uh, towns and also have the mediums of um, uh, families and, uh, they want to learn as well I would target uh, target at the their first challenge don't want to they don't stay in one place they are migrated to look for job it's about one million who migrated to Thailand not to other country they don't have any skill or legal or illegal migrations we don't have the figures with us now is the condition to fulfill for registrations so they can learn why poor family why is the um, vulnerable families we had the uh, card issues by ministry of planning Ministry of Planning, they help lots. The youth who's learned from 15 years old, the youth who drop school, the youth that drop school 15 years old in the sub degree have stayed by governments. It also for the uh, workshop uh, study as well. Those who study for three months, more than three months, they need to uh, conduct the uh, study for study tour for two weeks. Uh, study to uh, with the ages or the condition that we can learn, they can have job after they learn. Under 15 years old, it's a bit hard for them to find job. Uh, 15 years old, so we have some condition. Normally 18 years old or the adult, they can do the job. In order to coordinate in Cambodia, could be more than the youths in the country, more than 15 years, they can grow. So we can set up the 15 years old. The Cambodian also birth certificate, the Cambodians. Uh, it is the model of the equity funds and as an and assets card and promotion on the right card that's also held issues for issues by NSS card. Uh, to show some of the pictures. A target does uh, receive the benefit from pro program. What program 1.5 is no free of learns, free of child learning. I uh, can learn how to fix motor bag or learn how to do the waving or um, a tailors. The uh, government pay for them. They don't need to pay for. They receive 28,000 real. Uh, let's do study on the skill and the jobs market so before they learn what they can do after they graduate finish uh, school yeah. we do it like i i don't have some of those um, pictures to present you i can share in the group the uh those um construction workers do the they they can do uh, apart from the cook the chef they can do they can provide learn uh workers on training after the job they can find a job that's also study tour their practice so they can learn not only at the they do at school but they need to go and um, study tour yesterday the general directors of school have met with the the association of chamber of commerce uh 28 8, 18 17 they are prepared for a student to visit those uh, factories and restaurants about 18 17 of them so around 800 of them and around country about 3000 that's the first round that we are waiting for the feedback from them those who visit need to visit those the work location so we ask the permission from the boss a factory a restaurant owner so we need to learn only c1 levels they can learn afterwards um works for one or two years they want to continue they can continue again i visited the community villages they said that after they learn vocational training that's not too high the villages don't want to give more priority for those um work is not training but lifelong learning you can learn and some of them will learn with us the 40 or 50 um it's a skill uh learning that a market market need that we had about 38 different skill among 10 sectors those skill it's a high demand market for job so in the future the uh, appropriate of uh, job market and also uh, appropriate Reasonable payment is also will require the people, those who don't have skill. But this is the condition that I 
um, they should learn about 80% of windows and then they can get the pension support. Campaign of dissemination. Our dissemination, we had to conduct a lot of work. We had a 14 on November, the government with some night participated, but later we had uh, disseminated through media, through Ministry of Vocational Training and page of the uh, minister, we invite to the party uh, village and commune, we appear to the provincial district on the 30th. On the 30th of this month, we'll meet again to disseminate more information at the party office. Like I presented you that uh, we visit people household, we visit with the community um, authority. These pictures we are conducting, they see a dissemination to the villages. This is the app registration. Tibet at present, we are reaching out the whole country. Uh, most of them at the provincial, we have school. Some of them have the two or three school, they are bottom born, they are big uh, place. And the registration can reach out the school and as we go to this website or uh, some of the places the department will select for them and and we had the mobile track will select up those students for them. Or other ways uh, they can scan to page or more app, uh, mobile app one million and a half. After we scan, we have location of school vocational training school so they can select those places for them. However, we can make sure that so we can uh, address the and the apps that we can see some pictures so they can select. I like to uh, skip some of those slides. Uh, this is a program we uh, download to the website. You see this uh, slip here. We need to fulfill before that. Uh, we learn for four months, a uh, full time, full and morning and afternoons. They can select at night and the weekend study. Some of them we want them to learn, but they can make some income. They can select at night time after they can have skill. They can have a better job at prison that they are working now. After this, uh, we set out the skills and we have the teacher trainings, uh, we reform. We had the uh, study tool. We have prepared those uh, uh, education monitor and evaluations. We visit them. We follow ups and why they drop schools. It is the strengthening the quality of education. Uh, what I'm, I'm presenting to you, we have 10 sectors, 38 skills. No skill, it's a requirement at present and in the uh, futures, at present and in the future. These are the uh, books that we have prepared to study what's more strength. We have soft skill, soft skill. We are focused to all skill, need to they have the soft skill. Go to time and jobs on um, those uh, small jobs and this behavior and I think to what we have uh, like a uh, lady who said talk about Ukraine there's no more peace they feel regret we uh, also uh, learn to learn we teach them to avoid if any uh, dramas they um, they might be forgot but they will teach them how to laugh what they have what is new strange to the skill we are focused on this a uh, second uh, from home uh, probably never heard the word from home technology will learn based on they have this uh, table to 
with the contractions and cars uh, to they have to be patient but patient uh, first time to need to stand stand about six to eight hour for one or two weeks if they can be here it's they can learn for for four months they can do it for four months it's like, you know, uh, forcing them to do it. We have the technology for four to five models. Each uh, model be four to six uh, models. This is the certificate they provide them. After that, our co-workers training, we provide more. These pictures will sign MOU with this, uh, the institute and factories for our study tour. This is all I have for my presentation. Thank you very much for your pay attention. Thank you so much for a uh, lady who made the presentation. But all of us, I like to know some things. I think I think I think I think I think I think I I uh, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests, uh, excellencies. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity for me to talk to you today. I know I'm the last one be between you and the coffee break, so I will be trying to do the job uh, best I can, uh, going through the main presentation points as quickly as possible. And if there are going to be any points you want, បាទយើងចាប់តាមពិសេសដល់ខ្ញុំមានប្រជាជនវិបាកខ្ញុំបានរស់នៅ <coughs> Some of the messages I have will just uh, add on, and uh, I hope it will inspire you to consider more. As we all know, uh, we have a lot of uh, documents in place uh, that highlight the importance of digital transformation for Cambodia's success. And um, one of the frameworks that I really appreciate is a digital economy and society policy framework that sets up very clear um, guidelines for the uh, country development. It doesn't work. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, but we also have to start with some bad news today. Unfortunately, we are not yet there to achieve uh, the benefits of the digitalization. And uh, living in the digital economy right now, we have to admit that Cambodia is ranked at the 92nd place among 146 countries in terms of digital readiness. So it's kind of, we, are, we have to admit the starting point is quite low and many, many things have to be done in that area. We also need to acknowledge that in general, if we take the whole population, only 30% of population have fundamental digital skills, which is actually not a big surprise as we know that uh, 85% of people living in rural areas, right? Access to education, quality education is quite limited. So how can we ask people to have the digital skills? I am sure every one of you have a mobile phone in your pocket, which is a great device. But like if you ask kids in the schools, how many of them have access to computers at home? Not many will raise their hands. So that is something that I think where is the bottleneck actually is for the Cambodian development is access to the digital skills, fundamental, fundamental digital skills. And working devices. <laughs> yes, thank you. So uh, what is important? Why do we have to understand that Cambodian economic growth and competitiveness depend on the digital skills? I think there are two main points. 
if we have a huge skill gap, we have less abilities to use opportunities presented by the digital economy, and that will affect economic growth and competitiveness in the global market. If the human resources are not ready to use digital uh, digital devices and the advancement of the technological revolution that is happening right now, there are many other opportunities to go to. Also, without skilled workforce, businesses may struggle to innovate, adopt new technologies, and compete efficiently in the global market. So from a strategic point of view, we have to understand Cambodia is a uh, small country, actually, right? So how can we be competitive and attractive to other um, to investors? How can we stand out? And human resources is definitely something that is so valuable. And the young human resources that we have so many in Cambodia. Okay. <laughs> okay. So would I have a chance to move? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we can skip this one. Let's let's skip this one, okay. So we will have here, uh, since I have only 10 minutes. So the news are this year, starting from the last year, everyone was talking about AI, right? Everyone is talking about AI. And we have to admit, we live right now, today, in the age of AI. When I was born and starting in the school, it was not even like, the, it was only in the science fiction books that my father was reading and he would be telling me about those like ideas and it was crazy. The crazy science fiction is the reality right now. So how can we be ready for that? And the thing is that the development is very, very fast. So if we don't invest into the fundamental digital skills, the gap will be just growing. And the only way for us to leverage in that is act fast. The bad thing about education, education takes time. There is no function in our brain where we can just upload the data and all the knowledge is inside our brain and we start working. Humans have need to have time to learn. And that is something that we also have to acknowledge with all our efforts, we need time. And I think the only way to approach this kind of challenge and struggle is to have this new mindset and get ready for the like learn, uh, learning as the new reality. So how many of you have learned a new skill, a new course uh, in the re recent uh, months? Maybe? I certainly did. I'm always constantly learning online and trying to improve my skills, even with micro courses or reading and use on technology is super important. So in this fast pace of digital transformation, the only way for us to stay relevant is to keep learning. And this is why this forum of lifelong learning is really important for the development of the country. But I want to remind you that there is nothing new. And this is an old proverb that is saying learning is a treasure that will follow us everywhere. So this is an ancient wisdom that has been with us for, for, for centuries. So how can we implement that right now? And this is while I'm working with the young people, my, my message to our students who graduate from IT Academy staff is always to tell them, you graduated out to get the diploma, but your learning path is not ending today. You have to keep learning all your life because we know that these young people are going to have at least 16 to 17 jobs across five to seven careers during their lifetime. And that means they will have to keep learning. Um, also, just quickly to share with you how I see uh, the key components of the development of the digital skills. Number one, strong fundamental skills. And we've heard today from uh, excellencies and uh, representatives of the ministries how much uh, attention is paid to giving opportunities for the students to learn the digital skills. However, there is one trick there. We will need to keep advancing and updating our curriculum and our educational approaches for with the digital skill set, even at the fundamental level, it's not enough to know words and Excel right now. You also will need to learn online security. You will also need to learn how to use internet efficiently. And also 
generative AI tools that are actually um, a reality and can enhance opportunities. I also believe that uh, giving access and information and new technological and new technologies awareness is important. Cambodia has amazing examples by implementing blockchain technology, right? So how are we following the trends? Are we understanding how they work? Can we apply them and innovate on them? And today it was mentioned already, and I fully agree, soft skills, or I call them human skills, are super important. And that is what makes us different from the artificial intelligence, the, uh, the, the human skills. So how are we developing our uh, people in um, with critical thinking, problem solving, teamwork, accountability? And that is not coming through an, only a textbook. It comes through the whole culture and uh, approaches um, of um, the uh, education. Finally, I would like to have the opportunity to talk to the leaders who are today here. Actually, the change starts with you, with us. Uh, we are responsible to become the role models. We are responsible to facilitating and giving opportunities for our employees to learn and uh, keep learning all the uh, work uh, time with us and embrace this growth um, in acquiring and improving the technical skills. Because I do believe lifelong learning is actually this boat. Like we all know that when there is a water festival, there is one captain, but the efforts of all people who are in the boat take the boat in the race forward. So do we have this culture of collaboration and learning together and how we are contributing to that? So uh, just to summarize, uh, formal education is there. It's a huge emphasis, but it's not enough. That's something that we have to remember. Formal education is not enough. Let's not put, not put all the pressure on the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport, and the Ministry of uh, 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 Vocational Training. It's not only on their shoulders. Uh, it's everyone's job to be participating in the lifelong uh, learning process. And that starts with the workplace trainings. How much time do you allocate for training your employees? How much time your employees want to spend in learning and what exactly are they doing? Do you support them in that way? Online self-paced learning is an excellent tool, but it requires a lot of accountability from the learners. Do we helping them learners to understand the value? Do, are we helping them to access those tools? Are we in, encouraging and inspiring them to keep learning uh, new skills and opportunities? And finally, I do believe uh, that public and private partnership where there is a collaboration is extremely important. And this forum is actually an example of uh, why, why bringing together stakeholders and discussing these issues and, and having that on our agenda can actually uh, lead to the actions and improvements. Nothing in the world is difficult for one who is determined enough to achieve it. That is an old proverb. Again, the wisdom from centuries, nothing new there. But I do want us to finish today with this idea that if, as long as we are having our minds set up on improving, as long as we understand the benefit, as long as we are committed to support the people we work with and become role, role models ourselves, we can achieve it. There are challenges, and many challenges have been discussed, infrastructure and resources. Uh, internet is not available everywhere across Cambodia, so that kind of makes it a little bit difficult to implement all the technological uh, advancements. Digital divide and inclusivity, not everyone has the same access to the uh, digital training and digital resources. Um, this is why, for example, IT Academy Step started in 2019, Sisters of Code, a special program only for girls to learn digital skills, because we do believe that we have to promote and create a community where girls are feeling welcomed in the techni technical field. And also change management. There is going to be a lot of resistance. There's going to be a lot of questions. Why do I need it? What we basically... The only way if we communicate, if we work together, we can achieve better results. I have heard many things, and I and today also someone has mentioned that 
like uh, machines will replace humans, right? That's something that we all are stressed about. Like you open the news and they will say AI will replace humans, which is actually working in this field. I would say, I don't agree. I think humans without digital skills and AI skills will be replaced by humans with digital skills and AI skills. That's the only difference. Humans are here to stay. But the question is, if we have enough of uh, skill sets to be competitive and use technology for our benefits, this is how we are going to grow. Yes, so steps to take collaboration, just to summarize my last slide before the coffee break. Collaboration, and this is a great example of us being here to get together today and listening to each other. And also, um, I'm looking forward for the uh, Q&A and panel discussions. Reforms and investments, policy reforms, and also like bringing lifelong learning idea on the uh, stage is, is one of the most important st steps uh, for, for the country, acknowledging that it exists. Also, investment into that uh, space is important. Investment into infrastructure, investment into training programs development, investment into access to the uh, devices. Empowering uh, initiatives, uh, are we providing affordable training programs? I was uh, really impressed by the previous speaker talking about uh, special programs for the uh, um, marginalized communities who receive certain uh, benefits for attending the uh, uh, training programs. This is a great example of empowering initiatives. And finally, which is super important, I hope that everyone today who is finishing, uh, who is attending this uh, uh, forum today will leave this space with the lifelong learning mindset that is actually, this is where we should start with. Thank you so much for your time. I hope I was into 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, so if you wish to discuss more, I'm very happy and I'm looking forward to contribute to the development of lifelong learning in Cambodia. Akun. Thank you so much, Mr. Director, for your presentation. I am looking to you, look at the screen, and you can have your career, you know, and I'm pretty group, and you team a tray, more than one tall, a bit of a junk crowd, that you can be pizza, you can have some group and join. I am looking to you, and I'm pretty mole, and join some random by the two team, and I have some run. Yeah, pay the primary, you know, chapter down, we were at the top, no, William Mount, no, 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 has the primary, so I couldn't.
Thank you.
Oh, what ho? Oh, what ho? What ho? What ho? What ho? What ho? One two, one two, testing, one two, testing, one two, two, one two, one two, two. Testing, one two, one two, one two. 
Want to, want to. Mới, mới đến lưu rồi, mới đến lưu. Testing one. Check one two. Mười phi bảy. Phát hạ lưu. Mười phi bảy. Ai nằm được chung tiêu lưu lục xoay để nếp cả nhà. Nhiều người dù đồng ăn với thị tương mù chỉ tì cổ rụng nâng chỉ tì mệt trái. Nóng khả nạ phê nê. Dược nhóm xông rút dụ lực chung thà. Cảm ơn thị đồng bài dương nâng chập đam đồng nào ca nếp phê bình tích nê. As I need you, Kim Song, Rosna, some on Petit Mo and Joy, some rule, and a yap, but Moon Jun chopped down, Domna, Domna car, the river that went out it, some group in June. Ang peti teng mu jiti kerup neng jiti metrai jit mai mendaung tiat jik nyom song kerup encun ang peti teng mu meta sembrul e rayabat encun cow kelai ang kut. Please have a seat. Then we will proceed to the next session. ແລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະຊິລະ
Well, thanks too much. Thanks so much for introduction. So, my respect to Excellency, ladies, gentlemen, and all participants, as uh, presented in the short uh, video clip that presented that the lifelong learning will uh, contribute to the promotion of quality of life and contribute to the uh, well being. So to continue, so please all uh, audience here. So the mic is like this. The mic sound is like broken. Well, one again to kick off our panel discussion. Uh, I, I call it like round of orders, 
uh, discussion and based upon the, the presentation in the morning session as well as the meanings, uh, the content represented by uh, DVV International and UNESCO representative and presented by PH Lancy uh, representing the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport, and Ministry of Labor and Vocational Training. So, and when we uh, originally uh, organized uh, the event, so we won uh, the weaker, we were discussing about a figure of 1.5 million. What should we do? Uh, we will doing. And we also would like to thank uh, uh, our uh, uh, panelists who are working with the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport and Labor and Vocational Training uh, to uphold uh, the skill and vocation, vocational training among the youth. But before I welcome the question, I would like to uh, have about like a request, you know, the two minute of re recap uh, from HLNC Secretary of State. And then uh, I will give the floor to uh, Sister Pawana to recap and to reconfirm the areas that we can have to discuss and also uh, hand the stage to UNESCO uh, who will uh, outline to what uh, will be doing by UNESCO uh, with uh, Cambodia as well as with uh, Secretary General in order to uh, promote, promote the implementation of national policy of the lifelong learning and the Ministry of uh, Labor and Vocational Training also will recap two minutes as well. And Mr. Uh, Masakon also uh, highlight on anything that he uh, uh, will uh, 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 like uh, sharing what uh, his organization will uh, doing with us. So now we would like to hand over this, uh, the, uh, the mic to his, uh, his Excellency uh, uh, Nosles, uh, Secretary of State, who will recap in you know, just two minutes uh, based upon the, what presented in the presentation in the morning. Well, first and foremost, my respect to Her, Her Excellency, Excellency Lady Gentlemen, and all audience and my core uh, panelists. The Minister of Justice, yeah, again, okay, again. So thanks so much for having me and giving me the opportunity in the past to attend this uh, national platform on lifelong learning. And because all the time, for what we, uh, uh, the reason that we are going here, and we all uh, want to meet and discuss what should we do more to make sure that while long learning uh, mechanism uh, will be implemented effectively and efficiently and as stated by the permanent secretary of state of ministry education youth and sport uh, you mentioned already that the Ministry of Education and Sport have implemented a lot of work and use digital mechanism as an essential mechanism to promote uh, effective education in uh, the kingdom. And our other speaker, guest speaker, also have mentioned a lot of good points. I would like to recap a little bit. You know, lifelong learning is a work that connected to our uh, education work that we have three point formal informal education and unofficial uh, education so all of this work uh, are the work have been implemented uh, by the, gov the government or what I call it it is a net a net education net that put in place by the Ministry of Education with our partner, with stakeholder that we have been done a lot of work already. So today opportunity is 
good time for us to leave you. Uh, what should we continue to do the work of a TLA and of a together? Well, first and foremost, my respect to Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, national and international distinguished guests, uh, for what we need to do more because it is now the 21st century. Like long learning is the fundamental life skill in this era. And we need time for sure. So, what we need to do is we need to catch up. Uh, the time of 21st century, and we need to prioritize uh, the action plan. Uh, which action plan that we need to do first, second, third, next, next, and next. So, as we, uh, as uh, myself and DVV International, we focus on the essential digital skill, which is 21st skill that can uh, help us to catch up catch up you know to catch up i can say the, the rest of the world and then number two is change our mindset uh, change our mindset uh, the mindset of those regardless of who you are but every one of us need to change our mindset to make sure that you know the soft skill we need to embrace the soft skill and we need to be ready to go so that we can achieve the goal uh, that we are aiming uh, to achieve by using uh, 21st century uh, skill. So we, the TV International and myself, I would like to encourage all of us and everybody to uh, think more about skill, especially digital skill. But when talking about digital, they are a lot of things. So we need to talk and think what should we start first? I think my suggestion probably we start with changing the mindset of the people, and then uh, we try to run to catch up with uh, the Industrial Revolution uh, 4.0. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you. And now I would like to hand over to. Okay. Well, thanks so much. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one again. So, yeah, we have, uh, today we focus on our topic is lifelong learning. So, what we need to work together further, like we have a good program and we work uh, in collaboration with three part parties uh, our education, UNESCO, and our ministry to provide uh, another opportunity to those who drop the school so that they can have opportunity to learn the skill, including digital skill, art skill. And yeah, I think uh, the other points are uh, mentioned by other speaker. Uh, regarding what we are doing and what we will continue, uh, digital skills will uh, incorporate in our work. So, good hard skill that we will upgrade. Make sure that we can catch up uh, this uh, century. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Well, thank you, Navi. Good to you. Okay, thank you. Very much. อันนี้ខ្ញុំនឹង
ហើយយើងក៏ថាមានទូរទីដែលក្នុងការគៀវកោទូអង្គនឹងអបទេជាសមាជិកនឹងឲ្យ <coughs> ពីការរៀនសូតពេញមួយជីវិតគឺយើងមិនគ្រាន់តែចង់មើលឃើញ <cười> ដែលមិនគុណវិញចឹងចង់ទោសផ្នត់កម្ពុជាការការរៀនសូត្រមិនមិនគាត់រៀនសូត្រត្រឹមកម្ពុជាទេតូទៅការរៀនសូត្រក
it is an so i don't want the understanding uh, uh, to be thought by us so i would like to encourage uh, every individual regardless you are the one drop school from primary school from any level or any grade until those who are graduated from university or higher education that they stop continue learning so this is just my point of view personally okay because nowadays uh, uh, learning uh, it needs to be consistently consistently and we are uh, all the professional duties we always use the word continuous professional development the keyword that we are using and at some workplace uh, those uh, are private workplace they call it upskilling or reskilling because if they don't do that they can't touch up the changes or the development of any knowledge and technology so it doesn't mean that this learning just go supposed to be doing by the learner or the student at young age but any business workplace factory or any uh, uh, community we need to learn it continue to learn but first we need to recognize acknowledge and assess assess the performance and capacities and then we try to sell the the mark i can say so it is essential because what because nowadays learning at any workplaces were at a company or at any industrial site they don't need just those who are the holder of bachelor degree or master degree yeah for sure they need it but it is not the mandatory requirement for now uh, as long as they have any specific skill that can be applicable in their production chain or their business line so that why we can see that nowadays the new education system what they call it module learn based and uh, madame from the ministry of uh, labor and vocational training also mentioned about uh, module based learning like i just go to learn those one module or two and then i come back to apply it in my workplace and if i want to continue to learn we can come back to your class but we need to count it right count it like credit or marks so the system that we are applying in the kingdom Cambodia, actually we are these support lifelong learning but the key is that those information is still broken like this uh it's connected to each other we get to uh integrate it we get to interconnect it uh, from each another this is the urgent problem that we need to deal it quickly if you can uh, solve it uh, quickly lifelong learning will become a pathway that everybody will get on board and go together and as you uh, as you comment and we have been done a lot of work to support uh Cameron government you know in the framework of uh, public uh, public and uh, private frame framework so that we can uh, enhance uh, human capital competition who are advantage of Cambodia in order to recognize recognize or assess their qualification or assessment mechanism or certification and for the development of module for learning in industrial sector we also have some giant or big corporation like uh, government industrial industry that employer they need a developed skill framework which the worker who are employee they need to be aware of when they get on board uh, in this industrial sector where can be the point of their carry pace meaning that they cannot join as the worker for uh, ever meaning that they can imagine if they add any one your time that we become a manager like we were become a orderer or they can move up to the member of the middle management so any work workplaces if the worker or the employee don't know the the 
the past the past way or carry past way, they don't know where they will go in. So if they know in beforehand or when they join on board, then they will try uh, to learn. Yeah, they will uh, experience with higher pay or also contribute to increase uh, in productivity of the industry as well. Thanks so much, uh, Mr. Sapir. Uh, as what mentioned by Mr. Masopi mentioned just now, I can conclude that lifelong learning is not just a pathway for us, but it is a food, it is water, it is air that we need to breathe in and out. It is a work that we need to do regularly. So what we need to discuss further in the second session in this morning, what should we do more and where should we go to learn what we need to learn to improve our life quality, the quality of life, and to ensure you know the harmonized life and what we should learn, how we should learn, when do we should learn, and what should we do? So we will discuss further about all of these uh, uh, points. We still have uh, around 30 minutes left uh, for Q&A. So our uh, team member, if you have any question from online, please take note on a piece of paper and uh, approach or share it with me. Or any audience here in this room, if you have any question you'd like to address to any pa panelists, please put your hands up and then you can start addressing your question. Well, uh, in order not to, here to be quieter, I would like to throw one question. And I want to thank all the panelists for your uh, introduction and thank Mr. Masupi Am uh, uh, from the uni school as well. And I'm really interested in what you have mentioned, the comment you uh, talk about what uh, ADB has been done with the Ministry of uh, Labor and Vocational Training in terms of skill and existing knowledge assessment in order to uh, recognize uh, for the community or for any individual uh, so that they, they can uh, get their knowledge or skill, uh, be certified or acknowledge, and they can continue to learn another skill or uh, any uh, session. And my second question is that, uh, what are the skills that now is uh, certified or recognized in the country and in the region? Thank you. Well, actually, uh, the question is good, but not actually for my work. But I will, I will uh, hand it over to the panelists from the Ministry of Labor and Vocational Training because the Ministry of Labor and Vocational Training will be the one implementer. We are just the one support with fund or assistance to support the Ministry uh, to uh, come up with the assessment system. For some policy, those workers who are on board like 15 years, 20 years, uh, they uh, don't have opportunity uh, to go to, to uh, university. But we need to recognize them. They need recognition and we need to recognize them. They need a place where they can get qualifica qualification, recognize or certify. So this is what I'm referred to. Uh, lifelong learning work, we need to uh, develop uh, or establish uh, assessment center. Uh, we need to you know, establish or produce accessor on those skills. And then we need to explain, instruct them the form that they need to follow. Uh, so I would like them, the, the, actually the Ministry of uh, Labor and Vocational Training, and we here we also have one uh, gen, uh, Deputy Director General and one Department Director to answer. Okay. Well, thanks so much for the question. And thanks so much, yes, uh, ADB for your support and also thank UNESCO for their existing support. Yeah, for sure we work, we have been uh, work together, but probably we in charge in different uh, sector or areas. 
uh, because for sure we need support and collaboration with the ministry, with the government line ministry and the development partner and private sector. Uh, to address to the question, what we have been doing uh, in terms of lifelong learning, yeah, we, like he mentioned, yeah, we have established assessment center for those who, uh, you know, drop class and go to work in the field uh, or in any industry like garment uh, factory, or sometimes they major on this subject, but they go to a skill that different from their subject. For example, say they major in economies, but they work as the accountant. So uh, we have this uh, uh, center. Uh, now there we have the assessment center uh, around, yes, yeah, six, six centers we have in Kumpeng, Batambang, and Simria uh, provinces. And we also plan to extend it to other location. And we already incorporated into the government policy as well in order to promote more establishment of the assessment center. So we try to to uh, help those who uh, don't have any opportunity uh, to the school. Yeah, we start with uh, PC like uh, level one, another word. Yeah, then we will access till you know like higher, or like a, like associate bachelor degree or one, what we call it, uh, because it is uh, high demand. So this is my answer. We have been doing doing this work, and we plan to do more. Actually, thank you. Well, so I would like to recap. Uh, so lifelong learning, we work focus on skill, uh, the skill for professional development uh, to improve the quality of life, and uh, learning. Yeah, some of the learning we don't need recognition. Yeah, sometimes we learn just yeah, for change our life to improve our life without any official certificate of recognition. So there are two things actually. This is the one hand raised in the back. Uh, maybe any question or any comment sharing. Well, uh, good morning, all panelists and everybody. I would like to ask two questions, continue from the uh, to UNESCO, uh, from the guy from UNESCO. Yeah, I'm a Mekra from the Smile for Children. We the NGO to have the poor children uh, to education and professional development. My, I, I had two questions actually, I don't want to address to any specific panelists. You all can uh, share. Uh, one is about lifelong learning, digital skill, and English. Because from my observation of the presentation in the morning, that digital skill and English skill is one of the <coughs> one of the analysts or drivers for lifelong learning promotion as well. So my question is whether in the national policy, how do you incorporate this into our curriculum to promote more widely the lifelong learning and digital skill up to uh, the remote area as well as any those households who are poor? Um, uh, I hope that uh, my question was hit because of my and my second question uh, because now they there have been a lot of activity have been done and the Excellency's uh, Secretary of State also mentioned about the, the professional uh, orientation and uh, skill development as well as uh, mainstreaming of the TV. Also, we have why dissemination through social media as well as mission to the field, to community, to con through conference and other events. And I also know that we also have the professional consultation and the professional orientation. But my question here now is that on top of that, on top of that at national level, should we incorporate professional orientation and professional consultation into the education curriculum or the ministry of education do us use and support or not? Because we want to mainstream it to the 
child, especially at the time before they drop the school. We don't want to wait until they drop the school and go to the community and ask them back to the school. We want to do like something like proactive. Right? Well, uh, thanks so much uh, for your point and the question. Uh, would you like to address to any specific panelists or just uh, everybody? Okay, because this is like open question. Yeah, the question one you uh, about our formal education or school. We uh, whether yeah we have uh, orientation or counseling. Uh, yeah. This is the question. I think the question that I would like to uh, give it to ADB or to HLNC Secretary of State, adults of them. Uh, uh, before they drop the school, do we need to, uh, or we have inform a student uh, where they should go and should be the Ministry of Labor and Vocational Training? Uh, on how to uh, mainstream the digital skill. I think, yeah, I think maybe go to the, the ministry uh, to uh, to other. Well, thanks so much, uh, Megra, the questioner. Regarding what we are uh, repairing for the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport, actually nowadays we have many uh, mechanisms to strengthen uh, the leadership and governance system at school, especially SPM mechanism and other mechanism like a new generation school that we have a mainstream and uh, provide training uh, to the school and management uh, uh, committee uh, as well as the teacher in order to prevent the, the student from drop, dropping uh, the class so that uh, the student can link you know, can link, you know, the, between uh, teaching, between teacher and student, and between the school and community in order to prevent the uh, school or class dropout. So we have many mechanisms, actually. And number two, whether uh, have we provided a consultation, let's say, when they drop the school, where they should go. We also have counseling service through the ministry mechanism, what we call it, that we have general department of youth who in charge of this work. And we also have other specialty department also uh, uh, work on this uh, topic as well. I think that's all for me, thank you. I just want to- um, um, recognize is that there are a lot of students that are out of school. So um, that's exactly why we are talking about flexible learning pathways. We need to support the formal system in terms of its relevance, its accessibility, to attract more students and um, have strategies to keep students in school. At the same time in Cambodia, uh, if we only focus on that, then we are really missing a large uh, part of the uh, young learners who have who have not or are already out of school or have not completed their education. So that's the one point to to make. And I think your point about uh, digital skills is it's very important. Um, it's a fine balance to promote the possibilities of uh, digital platforms and. Um, and technology and how it transforms our ability to access learning and education. At the same time, there's a risk that we do not consider also the barriers uh, that a lot of people in Cambodia will face to online learning. And part of that uh, requires, as you mentioned, um, significant digital skills and um, especially in more rural and more modular. And at the same time, uh, offering, yes, digital solutions, but also um, other solutions which provide in-person support. 
um, we should be careful to rely only on digital learning when we're talking about lifelong learning. As one example, uh, the basic education e equivalency program that UNESCO supports, we um, provide the online learning platform, but we also have centers around the country where students can go in person to work with a facilitator to either get support using the system or in terms of uh, uh, better understanding. So uh, you make a very valid point, and then there are all kinds of other considerations that require more investment, like language accessibility, the type of uh, uh, devices that the content is prepared for, and considering uh, what devices people will use when they access uh, the learning content. Um, uh, so yes, the, the, the question of, of inclusivity and access is definitely very important. Thank you. ខ្ញុំខ្ញុំសូមយកកាសដោយអាយកូហ្វូនហើយមានសំណួរមួយសួរមកខាងខ្ញុំតាមប្រព័ន្ធ <coughs> ខ្ញុំសូមបញ្ជាក់ថាគណៈកម្មការជាតិដែលប្រកាសឡើងដែលមានលក្ខណៈជាអន្តរកសួងហើយដែលប្រធានរបស់គណៈកម្មការជាត
cứ quan ai cả cảm thi sắc xa bình mười chín chỉ vật đầm bầy ai của châu ca riêng đấy cứ mình mình riêng tại chung điện như thay thằng đi chỉ thôi chung điện đi chỉ thôi lại sao mày thấm mấy bùng nến chỉ vật từ lứa sau kia vì bố nơi pe đây mà nè mà nè để chọn upgrade luôn ai lớn từ mà cũng rất tiệt có trời miền tầng hạt kia miền tầng sau kia miền tầng đi chỉ thôi kia chung điện bay đi bình châu kia thôi ai chỉ vật quạt cành đại bạch sai chỉ môi nâng cao vị thế riêng sắc xa bình môi chỉ vật này cả អរគុណចាយកុំអរគុណអេដំខ្ញុំចាប់អារម្មណ៍នឹងសំនួរប្អូនមករាពីអេសអើសំនួរទី 2 dương miền khâu sờ dương miền nẹp bực sao chịu bỏ chạy sai anh ông cả đi về vì bàn phơi cá sả lợp bong chịu muối nương mà chạm mà đôi dụ chân chìm đốn pram nương mà chạm mà đôi sặc sà pin sặc sà sạ cung chìm đốn pram cam vịt thi tràn đã muối nước nông cam vịt thi nút cứ dương miền cam vịt thi bực sao chịu bỏ dương ao ấy nẹp bực sao chịu bỏ pì nông mà chạm mà đôi sặc sà pin muối chỉ vật đẳng đắp một riêng chìm niên tuần pì dương và tòa bị quạt riêng chủng liên tuần quạt riêng vị thi sang để cả ập rộng đúc bên vầy quạt tam rộp tam rộp biếp bài cam vị thi sạc xa sạc có hai cam vị thi nút đôi đài lục rù kháng ADB mình bảo xa chân chủng riêng rớt tam mộ đi bố chắp bị mộ đi xôn đó đo mộ đi của mũi vì miên mộ đi chàng chắc nẹ riêng quạt miên chủng rơi quạt quạt mơ thạ mộ đi tí bích cho mà riêng này tại trong trang liên một điều tiếp của mùi ưu tiên hoàn chỉnh một điều tiếp của mùi giấy bì ấy giấy bì cá bằng cán sọc cọp phiệp pleasure chất kêu xá luôn chấm thua chẳng may ở luôn chấm rừng mòn một tí hoàn chẳng quạt miên sệt con ông cá rồi cứ một điều best chẳng nó phải đại đại bậc sa chịu bao dương đại dương ban thưa cái lòng máu chẳng đập mà chẳng mà đôi sắc sa bình mùi chỉ vật nắng về quạt đăng riêng ở hái quạt tập lập tôi bình mất ba niên chôm lực tất chất ai giờ đom lục chấm tiêu chỉ ti group đó đông ngọt đom đại chiết sáu mươi chín sáu mươi chín k rồi bao cái đại cam ca chiết sắc sa bình mùi chỉ vật nơi tin đi bê ta cho rùm ưu tiên hoa mùi nẹp bực sa chỗ bó rồi bao mà chạm vào đôi sắc sa bình mùi chỉ vật muối pel quạt từ phía từ từ hạ côn quạt quạt ăn nào nẹp từng ốc nếu bạn đăng thá quạt cứ chia khâu sờ lờ quạt cứ chia nẹp sa chỗ bò sắp tới miền khe muối cả làng ưu tiên hoa miền khe muối tha ưu bốc chẳng thừa bạc con sấy ưu phục chống chẳng thừa bạc con sấy hai bên nó mong của bốn chục chẳng con sấy quạt nơi trong xã cũng quạt đằng quạt đằng thác quạt miên lệ thì pru ở khâu sờ lỡ nơi trong mơ so châu mùi mũi dân đưa bàn pi nẹt tiền chia bờ đất nâng chia sấy chẳng quạt bàn kho tới nẹt cứu đại chia nẹt khâu sờ lỡ nẹt bực xa chỗ bao nơi trong mơ so châu nơi tì tăng mùi than bạc quạt hai nẹt cứu quạt ăn miên smart cách trong ca từ phím hay đôi sao mong cùng bốn chốt nẹt cứu có chia nề ri quạt có bị bạc đài đối với này hai quạt ban khoa từ mấy khốn hay mấy khốn lục miên smart cách đi còn tại nên khi ông chẳng lược chỉ ẩm nam nắng sông ca cho ruộng pi cướp mặt chặt thán pi cướp nẹt bẹp bón đang cửa xuồng đang ở đang nơi tì nì bơi bên tiết cửa xuồng thò mặc áo nắng sát ná có chia nẹt pleo đó tầm khăn dương miên nẹt bực xa chỗ bao hài còn tay rương mà chụp luôn, trời cá, rạc xong. Rạc xong, bật tế không ai dưỡng, cao hướng sập phẩm buôn phía rối, cư chỉ nẹ căn phẩm bột tật sạch nà. Nhưng rạc xong, bạn đau tui nửa tì giang sống khăn, thân ông cá, thua ở miền xong tiếp hiệp lời chật. Đối chứ nế, mê dưỡng đại lục bọc bóng trào cơ sát, ca sạch xa, rư cò giả hạ công dưỡng đại lục miền vị bạc tình xếch, có ách từ rô quạt ả ràm, chẳng quạt ả ràm, cao bẩn triệp vì pro bài dương chia để sọ thò mà đa tâm để dây rương môi nâng ắt sơi khăng tê tiền tai bà sơn chia bà ăn bà sang nộp về để lục khô sna tê sna hái lục ai bẩn triệp tịnh tươi tiết cứ cứ chia rương môi đài là ở được chứ nhé đã trong tên nâng sẩm nua nên khi ông quan trở thả cua tai bẩn triệp cho từ đã cho từ khung cỏ xuống phân mình men tai cỏ xuống ấp rôm tê cỏ xuống bẹp bòn vì pro rương này cứ chia rương rồi bao dương để ăn khné trả xong ăn con Pasum okun pung pebana, bot penghang, tuk bot penghang kang dalam 
บบลูกสไลนัตลีกอดเมียนภาษาทาแมนเจริญบอกกระทรวงการเงินนั่งกระทรวงอบรมแต่ดักนั่งเลือกมาแต่กอดตั้งปีเนี่ยนั่งเตะเรื่องไลฟ์ลองเลยในนี้คือเจริญตูเตอร์จราจรเทียดได้ปวดรอดกรุบรุบเตอร์แต่ฝึกช่วงบานแต่ตัวสมนุปีไทยปีบันไดสังคมสมนุปีมุ้ยสัวทายUh, very good morning and my respect to this lady, ladies and gentlemen and all uh, participants. I'm a chat to say the Secretary of State on the of Religion and Call. And I asked the series question, not testing question. Okay. And one is about technology, digital technology. If we want to learn where we should go to, this is my first question. And my second question, how long it will take if I want to learn digital technology? And my third point, can I request, because we have to over 70,000 monks, because the monks also need to learn digital skill as well, because the man will not in the manhood for the rest of their life. The man also can live the manhood as well, because, uh, yeah, the man, uh, other than uh, soft skill, we also want the man after they live the manhood can also have the digital skill as well. And uh, in Cambodia, uh, we have uh, over 93% uh, of uh, Buddhists in Cambodia. And I agree that the monk is the role model uh, for the Buddhists. And the monk are the influent people. Anywhere the monk uh, go to, everyone organize a stage or organize a chair and offer food and offer the, 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 the you know, some of kind of uh, like budget to the monk as well. So the monk can be the one take part and I will take part too. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, and we we'll, would we'll like to hand this to our panelists. I would like to answer to the question regarding uh, private sector, how and what the private sector can do if they want to take part. Actually, a private sector play a very important role in the country development because they are the one uh, create employment. Uh, Private sector uh, create employment and uh, produce a product and service uh, to for changes of the currency as the revenue for the countries. So there are two things. One, uh, the private sector create a job, create employment, and uh, make revenue for uh, nation and society development. And what the private sector need to do, because they need to compete with each other in terms of uh, sell their service or product. Uh, we have seen much. 
Yeah, they need to be very competitive. Yeah. Uh, their competitiveness is up to their uh, productivity and their productivity based on the skill of their workforce. So they need to make sure that their staff member has the skill, be able to use high technology that can be you know, competitive with each other. And nowadays, because of having seen the important of the private sector by the government. The government has established a fund, what we call it skill development fund. Skill development fund for what? For the private sector uh, to access or request uh, uh, for this fund and work as a partner to train, to train between the vocational training center and with the industry, industrial actor or the company. Because this work for two benefits. Number one, respond to the need in the market. Because uh, if we train without engagement from the industrial actor, it's just a training without responsive to any uh, demand in the market. And number two, for sharing, sharing the resource and the skill. We need to share the courses. In the, the private sector need to share some courses. This is what the government is doing nowadays and gain a lot of interest uh, from the private sector. Because in the future, the private sector need a role. Actually, in the labor law, we already state uh, this uh, role already, but not yet uh, broadly implemented. Yeah, in the law, the private sector, uh, they need to have the application to train or they will uh, subject to the fund uh, to the government because the government need to train uh, and they need to pay if they don't train their, their labor force. So uh, before we start enforcing the labor law, the government is now uh, starting implement sharing course uh, mechanism in order to try to gain their trust, to gain their engagement, and also to share the course with the private sector. That's why the, the private sector, they need, they have uh, the application to upskill, reskill their uh, the labor force. Okay, now we would like to hand the mic to His Excellency Noslef uh, to share, uh, to answer to the question, what are the strategies to make people want to learn? I can say we need the, another question, I can ask another like word. It, what medicine that we they need to take in order to make them want to learn? I think there is no medicine that make any individual want to learn, but those who want to learn, those who are keen to learn, only they know the benefit. Learn for what? The purpose of it. The, the question that I would like to ask back is, you want to learn for what? Like Mr. Master Pip have mentioned, yeah. His answer or the answer my question. What I just would like to add on top of him is that, you know, the learning or the learner is up to the actual demand, actual need. And the learner need to try to see what are the benefits from learning. For example, let's say a worker, a construction worker, let's say, uh, before they just know how to like uh, install a tie or the, the bridge, but without take uh, learning, they cannot have a straight line of a tie or bridge installation. But when the engineer came to inspect, because of the poor quality, they will destroy, destroy it, re rebuild it again. But if the worker, even they are no more worker, if they have uh, opportunity to learn, they can do it fair with quality and can get higher paid. So everyone can enjoy the benefit. So learning, even the worker, when they see that it is useful, uh, useful and beneficial to their work, yeah, they will be keen to learn. And I agree with Mr. Uh, Masu Suti that any individual uh, or organization, uh, even the government, uh, 
uh, line is three. The government also try to push uh, to make them arrange the training, the training regularly, and it, yeah, even the workplaces as well. Yes, yeah, some other organization or company they call it human resource uh, bureau or office. So the human res human resource uh, office of bureau, whatever they call it, they will have the trainers. They will have the people the person who supervise uh, and analyze the skill gap, the, the training, like need assessment, uh, to monitor uh, the, the quality of the work, uh, the efficiency of the work as well. So the mechanism are the in place. But uh, for informal education, uh, there are some problems that uh, uh, they had difficulty to attract uh, the those who drop the class or to back to a school. We also actually we already have some program like in uh, reentry program, literacy program, and other uh, uh, life skill. But still, number of students still limited. We compare the number of those who drop the class and those who come back. Yeah, the drop though the, the dropout class we have around one thousand. You know, at the primary school and at uh, intermediate level, we have another 100,000 who drop the class. So together, it's 200,000 already. And where they are going to? And at the literacy uh, number, we have around uh, 500,000 uh, illiterate people. So this is not talking, not yet talking about the skilled worker. We are talking about how to uh, the people who literacy, like know to know how to read and know how to to uh, to write. So the question, uh, what should we do and how to do it? I think only we all need to work together to do the job and uh, training. We work in collaboration with the uh, training center and the workplace, the business. They need they need to uh, take part as well to make sure that we let them know. Let's say the campaign, uh, 1.5 million million uh, learner for training. Yeah, the government is now uh, deeply committed. You know, we provide them training and give the money as well as like compensation or incentive. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ma'am, I want to also would like to share uh, in response to the question uh, raised by our Secretary of State uh, from the Ministry of Culture, uh, Religion and Culture. Well, in response to the question whether how, uh, if somebody want to learn, what should they do? Because they want to enjoy life, uh, lifelong learning. The answer is not difficult. You can learn anywhere in the bathroom, at home, under the tree, at pagoda, or at any place where you are at. As long as you have, uh, you know, you have, you are keen to learn. And in order to be keen to learn, you need to change your mindset. We don't have to wait until we have all that thing like in terms of book, in terms of space, in terms of table and chair. So you can learn any any place. But first you start with changing your mindset and then we can learn anything we want to learn. Because uh, according to the theory of the adult learning, uh, adult learner, uh, when they want, they will do it. And they, when they do it with knowledge and with skill, and then up, they need to understand. And when they understand, uh, even they reverse, they still understand it. And to the question, uh, Excellency, you know, yeah, Excellency, uh, yeah, uh, share with me that nowadays Buddhism is uh, oh, in terms of number, number of the monk, uh, the monk, if they want to learn digital skill, where they should learn from. Yeah, they learn from anywhere, but first we need to change their mindset first, uh, meaning that uh, they can learn any place. We need to change their mindset. They don't need to go to fancy school that they can learn, but they can learn from anywhere. Uh, 
Well, and my request also request to have a training at the Buddhist, uh, like, uh, like a Buddhism uh, school or uh, institution, like New Ridge and Seham New Ridge school. Can we have a training providing to the monk? Yeah, we would like to uh, accept and note this, note down this request, whether we have any digital education or anything for up, uh, upskilling uh, the, the IT or digital skill for the monks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They already learn any place, uh, any under the tree, even they already learn, the monks already learn, but we want a system. Because it's cool, you know, uh, at any company, they also they also need the background when you put something in the CV as well, right? So yeah, we want to help them as well because when uh, in the manhood, they have a lot of view to the Buddhism, but when they lead the manhood, we want to do something for them as well before they leave us. Well, thanks to my excellency, we will take note of it. Well, lastly, uh, we would like to give the mic to the Ministry of Labor. Any last uh, comment? Well, uh, what make us want to learn, like our panelists have mentioned, we need to change our mindset and uh, manual. The Ministry of Labor and Vocational Training, we also have flexible uh, training course, like we also have weekend courses and night shift, evening shift, and also take it online courses as well. And ADB also have a lot as well. And we also even have the training to the community as well. Yeah, sometimes yeah, people want to learn, but uh, they don't know how to go to the school. So we have uh, have them, and yeah, we we now at the ministry we are very flexible. We provide flexible uh, schedule uh, of training course uh, according to their availability, and like uh, our secretary of state from the ministry of uh, religion. They said that where to go if they want to learn. Yeah, you can learn from any any training school. Yeah, and but for the formal one, yeah, we will take note of this. And uh, for the training we providing by our our ministry, maybe a little bit hard for now in current practice for the monk because when we learn, we need to link with the actual practice. But maybe in the manhood, maybe it's hard for the monk to, to put it into practice, right? So we, but however, we take note of this and we will think how we can do something for the monk. And lastly, I would like to request any individual, a stakeholder, please help to disseminate, to encourage people to continue to learn, whether your staff member, your friend, relative, especially the 1.5 million campaign that will help kind of you to the economic growth and help ourselves other citizens. Thank you. Yeah, because of the time, yeah, it's now 15 minutes behind the schedule. So I cannot recap or anything, but lastly, Jeff would like to express my profound sincere thanks to all panelists and the questioner, uh, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, and all audience, uh, and we thank you all. And we would like to uh, hand back the stage to the MC. Well, thanks so much, Excellency, Secretary of State, for being moderator of this panel discussion. And we would like to thank the five panelists for their insightful sharing as well. Ladies and gentlemen and all participants, the morning session of our national platform on lifelong learning uh, 2024 now come to the end and we will start the afternoon session at 1.30. And we would like to apologize as well the questioner uh, online that we don't have opportunity to answer to your question we call the time. And one again, we would like to express our sincere thank to the management of uh, Ministry of Education, UN Sport, Ministry of Labor and Vocational Training, uh, National Partner, Development Partner, and everybody. And we would like to wish you all the, the best and wish you a full blessing uh, of Buddha. And please enjoy lunch with us. Thank you.
Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn